section, we'll gain a common understanding of what contrapositive, converse, and inverse statements mean, and how they are interrelated. Consider the following statement. If you're sick, then you stay home. Fair enough statement. Now, let's consider a second statement. If you do not stay home, then you're not sick. Do the two statements have the same meaning? Imagine that a recruit submitted an MC to his army officer. The officer is a nice guy, so he said, If you're sick, then you stay home and rest. Later, the officer did a spot check and found out that the recruit was not at home. He subsequently reprimanded the recruit and said, if you do not stay home, then you're not sick. Then you shouldn't be on MC. So you see, we do say things the other way around to emphasize our point. And yes, the two statements have the same meaning. Now, let's dim the second statement for a while and consider a third statement. If you stay home, then you are sick. Do 1 and 3 have the same meaning? Obviously not. You could stay home for many other reasons, right? Now since statements 1 and 2 have the same meaning, they both would then mean different things from statement 3. Now let's look at statement 3 again. If you stay home, then you're sick. Does it have the same meaning as if you're not sick, then you do not stay home? Imagine a mother talking to her teenage child who is never home. One day, to her surprise, she found her teenager home. So mom says, if you stay home, then you're sick. The teenager turns around and asks, Mom, why do you say that? And Mom says, Oh, that's because if you're not sick, then you do not usually stay home. So yes, Mom would use both statements to emphasize her point. Hence, statement 3 and 4 have the same meaning. Now, bring back statements 1 and 2 into life. We understand that 1 and 2 have the same meaning, and 3 and 4 have the same meaning. We have also discovered that 1 and 3 have different meaning. So we can conclude that 1 and 2 are different from 3 and 4. Now, Let's spread the four statements out a little, because we want to change them into symbolic form. Suppose we let P be you are sick, and let Q be you stay home. The first statement, if you're sick, can be replaced by P, then can be replaced by the imply sign. You stay home can be replaced by Q. Statement 2. You do not stay home can be replaced by not Q. Then by the imply sign. You're not sick is replaced by not P. Statement 3. You stay home is replaced by Q. Then by the imply sign. You are sick by P. Statement 4. You are not sick is replaced by not P. Then, by the imply sign, you do not stay home by not Q. Now we dim the four statements and focus on the P's and Q's. If a statement is in the form of P implies Q, it's called the conditional statement. If it is transformed to not Q implies not P, it's called the contrapositive statement. If it is transformed 
to Q implies P, it's called the converse statement. If transformed to not P implies not Q, it's called the inverse statement. We have also seen earlier that statements 1 and 2 have the same meaning. So the conditional and the contrapositive statements are logically equivalent. We have also seen that statements 3 and 4 have the same meaning. So the converse and the inverse statements are logically equivalent. On the other hand, the two groups have different meanings. So the conditional and contrapositive statements are not logically equivalent to the converse and inverse statements. So far, we have discussed at great length on this one statement, if you are sick, then you stay home. The question to ask now is, do all these logical equivalents and inequivalents about conditional, contrapositive, converse and inverse statements work for any other statements? The answer is yes, and we'll prove it in the next slide. But first, we present to you the formal definition. This is really a recap of the previous slide and is good for any generic P and Q. If we were to construct the truth tables for conditional, contrapositive, converse and inverse statements, this is the output we will get for any generic P and Q. You can double check by doing up your own truth table. Now if we compare the truth values of these two columns row by row, we can conclude that the conditional and the contrapositive statements are logically equivalent. Similarly, if we compare the truth values of these other two columns row by row, we can conclude that the converse and the inverse statements are logically equivalent. On the other hand, if we compare these two columns with the next two, we find that they have different truth values for rows 2 and 3. So we conclude that conditional and contrapositive statements are not logically equivalent to the converse and inverse statements. In this section, we have learned that a conditional statement means P implies Q. Contrapositive statement means not Q implies not P. Converse statement means Q implies P. An inverse statement means not P implies not Q. We also know that conditional and contrapositive statements are logically equivalent and that converse and inverse statements are logically equivalent. However, conditional and contrapositive statements are not logically equivalent to converse and inverse statements.